The VF2 SS from Haas Automation is the most commonly sold CNC mill in America. Why did I wait so long to get one of these? What's it like to receive it? What do I personally do when a machine hits my floor? And how much did I pay, including hidden costs not often considered? Let's get started. Okay, so we just took delivery a few minutes ago. Let me walk through what I do when I receive a new machine. So this is about the 14, 13, 14, 15th machine that I've received. So over time I get better at inspecting machines. The first thing I do is I do a full walk around. I've already done that. I'm looking for things that just are almost below the surface. So when I get in, I look at the glass. I look at making sure that there's seals between the, gla the glass, the gaskets. Um, one time I had a machine that we put coolant in, started to run it, it was leaking like crazy. So I'm looking for um, that the caulking is complete around all the seams. So far, I see that. I also like to look at the paint, their overall finish. I did notice here, it's a little scuffed up. It feels rough. Maybe there's some paint that didn't quite get the full coat. Uh, it might buff out. Maybe they scratched it at the factory. Maybe the movers did it. I don't know. It's paint, we like to keep things pristine around here. I'm not gonna worry about it. If it were a deep gouge or scratch, I would definitely mention it. Um, uh, any paint that's missing is going to turn into a point where there may be rust forming. So that's why it's a big deal if you find scratches. Not so much like different sheens, I suppose you can say. I look at the doors. The doors, if you have scratches on here, these are easily replaced, not big panels, and I wouldn't ask the factory to replace a panel, but if this were scraped up, things like that, I would probably say, hey, get me some new handles. Um, now, the accessory shelf is not yet installed. It's in a box. We've never had problems with those. Um, at one point, that's not true. At one point, the edges of the stainless steel shelf where you hang the accessories was super sharp. So I say, hey, this is a liability. Uh, we can, uh, break the edges, things like that, but you should know about this. We're fine. It's just working in partnership with your machine tool builder. I would want that uh, type of feedback from a customer if they got one of our work holding products. We always want to make things better, so just pass along any feedback. Now, uh, some of the things about these machines is every year it seems like I, I, I assume that I'm 100% familiar with the build, the structure, all the little things. Um, but every year these machines have their changes. So I'm gonna walk around and familiarize myself with these changes that might stand out as being different. So let's keep walking. Okay, so the glass on the front of the machine is safety glass. These are plexiglass. These are prone to scratching. They do keep the protective plastic on it, but that's good. If I see scratches in the plastic, I'm probably gonna look deeper at the glass. So far, this glass looks good. Um, notice I haven't touched any of the wrapping, any of the pads. That's for later. What I don't wanna do is find something and then have to report it, and then there might be an opportunity where they say, well, we don't know if you did that or not. No, I'm not touching this machine at all. I'm simply doing a visual inspection. Now, you definitely wanna make sure the keys are present. I've never had a machine uh, have lost keys, but it's held on by a plastic bag. Could be lost in transit, it's not a big deal. That looks good. Um, the control cabinet is something that's changed often over the years that I noticed. Like, this is brand new. This new vent with a fan behind it. Just wanna know that. One of the things that we do around the shop is anytime we have these types of ventilations or fans, um, anything that's gonna do cabinet cooling is we buy 12 inch square, uh, very basic furnace filters. We have little magnetic clip-on things that I 3D printed just to add another layer of protection uh, and filtration. Uh, it's easy to do. These 12 inch square filters are dirt cheap on Amazon. And so we just throw them on as many 
uh, places around machines that we can, it really helps. Uh, so right there, I just showed you a few pictures. You'll see how it just is, makes maintenance so much easier. So I'm taking note of those types of things. So one thing to know is that this is where all the air comes in. Air comes in down at the bottom. There's a manifold up through there, distributed throughout the machine. If you've seen our robot video card here for that, uh, we use the manifold to power a lot of our work holding products and to tap in for any robotics that we um, hook up to the machine. So it's always good to know how many empty spots you have. Some machines I've seen, especially the older Haas machines, they don't have those manifolds or they were smaller and you have to create your own manifold. It's nice to know that this design really hasn't changed. Okay, so far I've done a full 360 degree walk around. I've gotten down under the machine, looked at the pads, made sure I have all my pads, there should be six. At this point, I feel confident that I'm gonna start unwrapping it. And the very first thing I do is open this side door. That allows a little extra light, gives me a different perspective to look in. And then I just start looking inside the machine. It comes with Cosmoline, that is a uh, anti-rust uh, fluid or, or coating. That's gonna be taken off by the tech. We're not gonna touch that. In fact, um, we don't touch anything during installation. We are just hands off. A lot of the times I feel more comfortable letting the tech unwrap the machine. That's fine with me. For the sake of video, we're gonna unwrap it. But as I'm in here, I'm again looking that everything's in place. We have Cosmoline sprayed on any uh, areas that might be prone to rust. Now, it's a pretty dry climate here in Southern California. Actually, the Oxnard factory, which is about 45 minutes west of us, it's along the coast, so it gets a little bit more humidity, that inland breeze off the, off the ocean. Uh, we're pretty dry here in, in Simi Valley, and, um, but we just wanna make sure that they did their due diligence in protecting the machine, especially if you're on the East Coast or especially international, you wanna make sure your machine was protected. Okay, so this is a well-built machine. Everything looks good. Uh, we've got the coolant tank behind us. Make sure you get that off the truck, as well as a bunch of boxes. Uh, in the past, especially the ST30Y, that was the last machine we bought back in, uh, well, about six or seven months ago, um, there was one thing that was missing. Uh, the tech called the factory, had it next day. So I'm never worried that things will be missing. If, of all the Haas machines I bought, only one box missing, and that was on a reboot. Keep in mind, that was kind of like a, a test run for the factory that was one of the first two machines off the line. So I expected that. Machine like this, they've got VF2 SS delivery down. So no issues with that. Let's start taking off some of this plastic. So here we are one week later, the electricians did a fantastic job. We have air going to the machine. The technician did the install. We did the spindle warm up program or break in. We warm up every day, we break in once. Um, and let me walk you through how we opted to set up this machine, including explaining what that is behind me in just a short bit. So the travels on a VF2 SS are 16 by 30. Now we could have gone with three of our pro pallet systems and use our largest pallet, which is 10 by 16. That would give us 100% coverage across the entire travel of the machine. That's so awesome if you're going for the highest part density. Remember, high density work holding is what we're aiming for. That way we get the most amount of walkaway time and the fewest amount of spindle changes. Check out our Fixture Friday playlist. I will put a card right up there. But let me tell you why we went with two. When we evaluated the parts going through this machine, 
we realized that we didn't need complete high density. We wanted flexibility. Like for example, we wanted to be able to go op one, op two, this is our pro pallet base, where we take uh, um, one machine around the corner and we take op zero, it's a preparatory uh, thing where we, re we remove a lot of the material. It, uh, any internal stresses in the material um, get taken out or uh, de-stressed, I suppose. It's just a, a preparatory thing. Then we put it in the vise for op one, do all the critical holes, uh, dimensions, um, the flatness. Then we immediately take our fixture for op two, bolt it down, and then flip it right over here into our op two. We knew that this would be the workflow for this machine producing our pro pallet bases. Um, after playing with it for a while, we are definitely set. Remember, these bases can be reconfigured however you like, but for now, this is a winner. Now, for what's behind me, the actual first job that we ran was on our Rotovice, and we have our Rotovice mounted to an 8x12 pallet, which we put on this right-hand pro pallet base. Now, if anyone has dealt with a rotor unit, they have, I'm not gonna say problems, but they're cumbersome for two reasons. Number one, if they're sitting on the machine table, they take up valuable machining space. Now we have another product called the Smart Plate, which allows you to mount the Rotovice outside of the machining envelope, but still on the table. It's a great thing uh, for any, uh, um, now it's for Haas machines, so it's gonna be a, a great option for Haas rotary units. But we figured, hey, we're going to palletize this, and so let's just put it down. But the other thing that's cumbersome about these is when you have to take them out. These units are heavy, there's electrical cables, there's a process for um, removing the fourth axis, not just physically from the machine, but digitally out of the control. That is so much over-processing. One of the lean wastes, of course, is over-processing, doing more work than is required. So what we've done here is we've palletized it and we've created a winch system. So we just pull this into a corner, our winch, these are standard off-the-shelf McMaster car components, uh, drive it with a just a, a cordless driver, and then we winch it up and out of the way. Now, most people see this and go, oh, I would never do that. Well, you probably might think that because you've never seen it done, but we have done this and it just, it's 100% out of the way. There is nothing that interferes back there. Um, at first glance, you think, well, what if the spindle hits it? Well, the spindle doesn't move this way. It's not like a UMC or, uh, or a fifth axis machine where the spindle moves left and right in the X. The table does. So there is literally no interference back here. Um, all the cables are tucked neatly into the access port. We run the single airline to the valve to unlock both pallet systems. Um, and there's just, it's, it's not noticeable after a while that there is about 150 pounds of equipment hanging from the inside of the machine. Okay, now another thing that we try to do with this machine is we're working through the standardization of the tools and the parts or components that will go through this. Once we know what types of components go through this, then we can standardize a tool list, then we can keep the, the drum magazine fully loaded with tools and only do one setup. Keep in mind, that these pro pallet bases have their own individual work offsets being G154, P1, and P2. Those are standardized. We use the round pin for the XY0 and the top of the Z pads for the Z0. Uh, I'll add a card up here to a Fixture Friday video that talks about where to put the origins. Okay, now to answer the question that maybe you guys are sticking around for, how much did I pay for this, including the hidden costs? Let's head into my office and we'll take it from there. Okay, so I pulled up the quotes and now I don't mind showing you these prices because every number that you see on this page, it's publicly accessible from the Haas website. It's called Upfront Pricing. We here at Pearson Work Holding, we do the same thing. Whether you're a billion dollar company or a startup, you see the pricing, it helps you dream and plan and you can just make a better informed decision and know that you're not getting the startup discount or the billion dollar company discount, whichever way that floats with other machine tool sales companies. So 
let's start going through this. Base price for a VF2 SS as of December 2020, 64,995. Comes with plenty of things included. And then you get into these things that I upgraded to. Now, I didn't necessarily upgrade to a lot of these, but um, they just came with the promo, which I'll show you in a second. So through spindle coolant ready, you never know if you need through spindle coolant, at least pay 9.95 for that fourth axis drive, as I showed you. The chip auger, don't buy a machine without a chip auger. Auto doors, that came with it. I've fallen in love with auto doors, we'll take it. Uh, P-Cool, uh, when you have the four nozzles pointing at your cutting tip, that's, that's great. But sometimes you, you wanna really hit a specific spot of the tool. I always get P-Cool with I think most of my machines, maybe there's like, yeah, there's one behind me that does not have it. It's an option that I've always gotten ever since I experienced like the absolute need for exact coolant at the cutting point. Uh, and then the chip tray filter kit, that's just $95. It just takes a lot of headaches away when you're trying to get chips out of the bin. Now, as part of Haas's uh, December package, was the Haas uh, tooling kit. And you can see, if you wanna pause the video here, there's plenty of things that came with this. It even goes on to page two. Now here's where the big discount uh, that was, again, publicly available. Um, this is where it kicked in. Totaled 78,848, the special customer discount, that's someone that took advantage of that Haas sale, $19,848 off of the machine. That's a that is a 25% discount. That is some value. Now let's get into some of the things that you don't necessarily see on the Haas website. Now freight for this machine is $1,100. Now this is something that sometimes gets buried or hidden because there's freight to the general location of the HFO and then it's the customer's responsibility to get a rigging company to take it off of the truck and put on the floor. I've heard some horror stories uh, where it's thousands and thousands, like five grand to take a machine off a truck and place it on the floor. We are about 45 minutes from the Haas factory. It's only $1,100 and it's on paper and it covers pickup at the factory the night before. They take it to their warehouse, they stage it, they plan their delivery route for the next day. We're typically at the top of the morning. Comes here, the same people that picked it up from the factory take it off the, the, the bed of the truck and put it on my uh, floor. I feel it's a great value for $1,100. That also includes insurance. So the on paper pricing comes out to $60,100. Now Haas does in-house financing. I've taken advantage of it a few times, especially the 12 months, 0% interest. Uh, it's a great way to reserve your cash. Um, so I ended up just paying that number right there. Now let's talk about some of the other hidden costs. Where I'm at in the county of Ventura in California, the state sales tax here is seven and a quarter. The state of California also has a partial tax manufacturer's exemption where they take off about three and an eighth percent. So we're in the 4% range there. And that came out to, well, you do the math, we'll throw the math up on the screen right now. So that being said, that just covers math, that just goes to Uncle Sam. The, uh, all the, the electrical came out to $1,200. We had to run from our panel up over down, hook it up. The guys were here about two and a half, three hours, I think when it was all said and done, including them planning it and doing all the shopping came back. Um, that can vary. Uh, it, there's been cheaper uh, installs than that when we have our, uh, what's called the gutter. When you, you have a bunch of wires in this gutter, you just come off and then down to your machine. That is a far more economical way to do things. If there weren't two things that I don't do in life, which is taxes and electrical, I would be inclined to do it myself. I don't do taxes or electrical because I'm convinced that both of them can kill you if done by yourself. The other thing is the tooling. Now we practice standardized tooling. So we had a tool list and we have our own tool crib in house. And so we initially just got all the tools that we wanted and we put them in holders that we didn't own. So we needed to go and purchase from, uh, we like Mari Tool, we purchased a bunch of things from them. We kept some of the holders from the Haas tooling package that came. Uh, so far we've been really pleased with it all. Not endorsing it, because I don't have enough time with the Haas tooling, 
but it was there, we're gonna use it. Now, when it comes to work holding, obviously we are Pearson work holding. We use our own products to make our own products. We have two of our Propal systems. Those are roughly $2,200 each, $4,400 or $4,500. And then we have our Rotovice Pro. That's right at the $3,000 point. So we're looking at, call it like a, an even $7,500 for, of course, top of the line, premium, high density work holding. That's a cost that we didn't incur. Um, but if I were to be approached by a customer that said, I got a new machine, I wanna tool it up right, we are obviously gonna work with you to put together a tooling package that makes sense for you. So two Pro Palette bases and our uh, Rotovice Pro, it's just, it's just a dream setup that we're totally loving. Now, if you're interested in this content, we have so many of these machine videos. We're a fast growing company, and so we are going to put out more content. Consider subscribing. And if you haven't checked out our other videos, we have our Fixture Friday series along with our moving series. And of course, if you have questions, we have answers. Check out our Q&A series as well. So until next time, go innovate your production.